Hello, welcome back to my channel. This is Blueprint Design and I'm Nikhil. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about wireframes. So as you may already know, we are in the process of a UX case study and the topic for my case study is language translation. And I've actually shared uh, a lot of videos before going through my design process all the way from research, from design, from analysis, uh, and now into testing. So I'm going to be sharing a lot more videos and, and going to walk you through my design process. So if you haven't already subscribed, uh, do consider subscribing to my channel. It really motivates me um, and helps me grow this channel to share valuable content with you. And uh, while you're doing that, also don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, it really just it like it makes me happy. So thank you for doing that. Um, as you, as I've already mentioned, we are in the design phase of uh, the design process and I've already shared uh, my videos about user flows and information architecture. So if you haven't watched those, uh, there's a link down in the description. Uh, be sure to watch those as well and follow along. In this video, we are going to be talking about wireframes. And uh, what we'll talk about is what is a wireframe, uh, when to use wireframes, why to use wireframes, like what is the purpose, uh, what are the different types of wireframes, what to include in a wireframe, and the tools that you can use to, to create wireframes. And finally, we'll also talk about what's the difference between a wireframe, a mockup, and a prototype. Uh, that's quite interesting, so, uh, so stay along till the end. So with that, uh, let's get started. So uh, wireframes basically are visual guides uh, that uh, the designers can use for and develop for uh, the designs for the screens or the web pages that they're working on and then show how different experimental solutions would flow for their target users. So in, in other words, like, you know, it's, it's a great way of getting to know how your users would interact with the, uh, the application or the website and uh, uh, through, 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 through the positioning of different buttons and different elements like menus on the diagrams, on, on the wireframes. So without all the distractions of the typefaces, the colors, um, the texts, uh, wireframes let you plan the layout and help you focus only on uh, the flow of uh, of the task or the layout and the interaction of your design so it helps in getting feedback from your stakeholders so let's talk about when to use wireframes um, it's actually best to create wireframes during the exploration phase of the product life cycle when you're actually thinking about solutions and based on the feedback and the insights that you've, you've gained from your research phase, uh, you can use, uh, you can create wireframes to build and explore the more detailed designs in form of the mockups. Like, you know, if you've already reached that phase that you know how this particular solution is going to work out, you can actually skip wireframing and then move directly onto a more detailed version that is mockups. So not really skip wireframes because, well, it's, follow the process. Wireframes are actually based on the research that you've found and then the flow that you've created, the user flows that you've created from uh, which are also dependent on the research. There's some differences between wireframes, mockups and prototypes. So we'll talk about this in the end of the video. So please stay around. Let's talk about the purpose of wireframes. So one of the key purposes of using wireframes and creating wireframes is to keep the concept user focused. That means like wireframes can be effectively used as communication devices between different stakeholders. It can also be used as, to facilitate feedback from your users from different like usability tests or uh, different uh, user research methods. It can also be used to instigate conversations with the internal stakeholders, for example, your developers, your project managers, or even your high level executives. Um, but more importantly, wireframes are most often used to generate more ideas either between the design, like within your design team or just your larger working group. Another key function of the wireframe or like key purpose of the wireframes is to clarify and define website features or application features. 
um you can all like you know you can clearly communicate to your clients or different stakeholders how the website or the app will function and what purpose will it serve and again like it goes back to saying wireframes actually stem from the user flows that you already created so uh, it's best to follow the process and follow the steps in the design process to come to the wireframing Wireframes also allow you to visualize how the workflow fits together and how many screens you need, how many um, like, you know, different models and different elements you need, which also helps your developers to kind of estimate how much it's going to cost to implement that design. So wireframes are actually very important. Um, with wireframes, stakeholders can provide like brutal and honest feedback to improve and refine the workflow, not the wireframes, the workflow. So that's more important. And we'll talk about it a bit more in just a few moments. And uh, another uh, purpose of the wireframes is that they are quick, cheap, and easy to create. So you can easily put down ideas and solutions while you're brainstorming with just a pen and paper. Like wireframes need not be that uh, highly detailed diagrams as you more often see on the internet. No, uh, it, it they don't need to do that. If you have a napkin and a paper, that, that's good. You can start with that. It's basically, it's important to get started with a wireframe. Just put down ideas and then combine those ideas and process and further refine those into more detailed steps. Like that's how you kind of progress in creating the designs. Um, you can also use digital tools to create wireframes, but I think in my opinion, uh, if you directly start with digital tools, you may get caught up in uh, the more detailed placement of the different elements. So um, if you have an idea that you want to flush out or like, you know, just think about an idea and explore the solution, it's best to start with a pen and paper. Exploring uh, the very core layout or like, you know, how how all the layout, uh, all the elements are going to lay out on your screen allows to actually identify the flaws and pain points and actually help uh, help us and help the designers in fixing them early on in the process. So creating these wireframes on a pen and paper, you can basically just like flesh out a very rough version. I'll show you an example of wireframe I created like a while ago on just a pen and paper. It's very rough just so, uh, just to put it out there that it's not all that uh, glittery and uh, refined in terms of when it comes to wireframes. The, the Just remember one thing, uh, the idea is to generate ideas, generate solutions, as many of them as you can, just on a pen and paper. It's that simple. So now let's look at some of the types of wireframes that you can use and create like a starting point in creating wireframes is the low fidelity wireframes. Um, they are basically just the visual representation of the web page. Um, they are fairly rough, created without any sense of scale, grade or pixel accuracy. Like that's really important. You know, you can omit any detail that would potentially be a distraction in the idea generation process. Uh, just just remove all your distractions. Uh, just create as many ideas as you can. Uh, low fidelity wireframes, they're useful for starting conversations. Like that's the whole point. Um, deciding on the navigation layout. Again, going back to the user flows and deciding how many screens you will be needing. Uh, just getting a rough estimate of the, like, you know, the efforts that are going to be required. So here is an example of the the low fidelity wireframes that I created for one of my projects earlier. And as you can see, they are really rough. Like there's no scale, no pixel accuracy whatsoever. Uh, I just took a piece of paper and a pen and just started out, started with uh, putting my ideas down on paper. The focus was uh, to, to put as many ideas down on paper and also kind of consider the user flow that I've just created. Uh, when I created the, uh, the, wire, the low fidelity wireframes on paper, it helped me kind of visualize what the flow would be, how many screens would be required, and then uh, how I can refine the workflow. Like that was the whole goal of creating these wireframes on pen and paper. So now the next type is mid fidelity wireframes. 
these are more detailed with like specific components outlined uh, there are the, the features can be like more clearly differentiated for example you can use like varying text weights like different headings um, different uh, emphasis on the text like bold or highlighted or ital italics or like you know stuff like that you can also use like some grayscale colors to identify certain elements like images or like video blocks and stuff like that. These can be typically made with a digital tool like Sketch, Balsamic or Adobe XD or Figma or like, you know, any others. But I do want to kind of uh, emphasize that the tool you use is not important at all. Uh, the the level of detail that you add in here or the idea that you present it's basically still a conversation point between the design team and the development team or different stakeholders and and yeah it, it helps to estimate how much effort it's going to require to to basically create that user flow and realize that user flow so with that same example of those wireframes on pen and paper uh, i transferred those to a digital using a digital tool and the the idea was still the same uh, i didn't focus a lot on like you know just fixating myself on using that particular design tool my focus was uh, basically to to flesh out the navigation the the user flow and to to have this as a conversation point between uh, the stakeholders so the next type of wireframes is the high fidelity wireframes now here in this phase when you come to this phase you can actually boast about the pixel specific layouts in your designs um this like high fidelity wireframes may include actual like featured images or different graphic assets and even relevant written content like if you have it ready uh, you can use those at this point um, they are ideal for like exploring and documenting uh, the complex concepts and you can actually like use these to kind of present a more like present your solution in a, a relatively formal way to different stakeholders for example like the c-level executives like it's not the best idea to actually share your pen and paper wireframes with those higher up executives right so that's the whole point here and you can also explore uh, the different like menu systems like the navigation menu systems or even like interactive site maps or use like you know drop downs or like hover effects at this point it's not required but you can use those like that's that's the point so from that same example uh, here is like the image that i created this is an example i added like different like you know uh the typography in the added different like graphic assets icons navigation menus even like actual text at some point uh but that's not necessary uh so that like you know it's i'm sharing these images just to give you an idea when you work in a real like you know a professional design team like you can expect uh, the level of details in the different wireframes uh, if you're working in a company or if you're working in a project with like different uh, cross-functional teams, uh, how, what's the level of wireframes you use in your projects? Like I'd love to hear from you because I'm also working uh, in, in a company and I'd love to learn how you are using wireframes in your design process. So feel free to let, the, uh, let me know down below in the comments and uh, let's, let's start there. Now let's talk about what you should include in the wireframes so as i just said like fidelity it basically means the level of details right so it depends on like the level of fidelity you want uh, as a conversation point in your design team or with your different stakeholders so you may include like logos like search fields like headers um, buttons uh, icons even pseudo text in latin like you know the lorem ipsum text that we normally we've actually come to use so you can use those in wireframes. Um, high fidelity wireframes may also include the navigation menus and uh, like, you know, some contact information, footers, even the headers and the actual content, uh, actual content. One thing to like, you know, remember is that wireframes are just two dimension, like let's flat out on paper, right? So it's, it's, it's okay to not include certain interactive elements like drop downs, um, hover states or like accordions, uh, just to name a few. So it's okay to skip those in the wireframes. 
right so when to add those things uh, we'll we'll just talk about that when we compare wireframes prototypes and mockups so uh, just stay along so let's talk about the different tools that you can use to create wireframes uh, so obviously you may already be aware about figma adobe xd sketch balsamic uh, but before these were popular, uh, I've actually, we've also used like Photoshop or InDesign or any kind of like, you know, um, image editing application to create wireframes. But uh, even before those and even right now, good old pen and paper just works as fine as any of the other solutions. Uh, the whole idea is that all of these examples are just tools to create wireframes. So you want to uh, emphasize on the ideas and the navigations and the interactions in the wireframes rather than the tools uh, that, that are used. I cannot uh, emphasize this enough. Either way, like let me know what tools you use to create wireframes. I'd love to start a conversation with you down in the comments. Now, let's talk about what the difference is between a wireframe, a mockup, or a prototype, right? So, as we mentioned earlier, um, wireframes provide a clear outline of the page structure, the layout, the information architecture, and overall direction of the user flow. So, it, it does not include any distractions such as color, such as typography. Um, it, they only facilitate the conversation and provide a good opportunity to get feedback from different stakeholders. On the other hand, a prototype is basically a working model of an app or a web page. Uh, the prototypes also allows designers to test their user journey with different stakeholders like uh, the, the internal stakeholders from your company or even the clients or the users at some point. Prototypes allow to pinpoint any potential issues with the interaction of the flow and uh, they allow to fix those issues early on in the process without spending any uh, significant development efforts. Now a mockup is basically a static simulation of the finished product like that's the level of detail you understand the difference here uh, a mock-up is uh, the like a simulation of the finished product that delivers the visual look that you are expecting the developers to create and this is like the the final version that you are going to kind of share that's how the product is going to look and work and function that's something that's a mock-up uh, it also includes typography, uh, iconography, uh, color, um, even the overall branding style if, you, if your organization has one. So at this point, you, when you create or when you come to a point where you're creating a mock-up, like that's when you'd kind of add the branding, the color scheme, the iconography and all of that. Um, so mock-ups are basically shared with the development teams for implementation. You can share the wireframes and prototypes for just starting up a conversation with the development teams. But what is going to be implemented, uh, that's basically a mock-up. So I, I hope this uh, kind of overview about a wireframe, a mock-up and a prototype was helpful. Uh, if it was helpful, please leave this video with a like. Uh, it really helps me and makes me happy uh, so I can create more videos for you. If you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments. And uh, if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one call with me for your next UX project, like whatever it is that you're working on, if, if it's like, you know, you want some feedback or you're stuck in your design process or you want to decide on your capstone project, uh, whatever it is, like, you know, uh, if you want to talk to me related to user experience and the design process, uh, the link is down in the description and I've made it real easy for you. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm actually really interested in growing this and helping more and more people uh, within the community. So share this video with your network, with your friends, with your classmates, if you think this was helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much.